out of control hoarding. You think, wow, why am I doing this? I need to stop. Leaves a mother and daughter overwhelmed. It's very, very chaotic and stressful. And when the experts step in. A stinking, rotten mess. Even they can't believe their eyes. What I saw would make anybody want to vomit. Caught on camera, hoarding. For more than 30 years, Ron Alford has owned Disaster Masters, a full-service crisis management business he now runs with his wife, Melissa. Among other services, Disaster Masters offers assistance with severely cluttered homes. We know that we can help those people. Ron and I are both project managers and go in and help people that are living in unsafe and unhappy and unhealthy conditions. But according to Ron Alford, Disaster Master Services are only available to those who make the call themselves to take their own first step toward recovery from excessive hoarding. And the first question I ask them is, are you calling for yourself or somebody else? About 70% of the phone calls I get are third parties trying to fix somebody. Those people I say, sorry, can't help you. I can't help somebody that's not interested in helping themselves. When a call comes in in 2010 from a school teacher needing help in Staten Island, New York, the Alfords head out for an assessment with video camera in hand to document the case. But Alford assures all his clients that their identities will remain confidential. You couldn't open the door 90 degrees, maybe 30. This lady had a hard time getting in her own door. As soon as you walked in the, in the door, the front porch stacked from the floor to the ceiling. I remember having a difficult time walking through the front door and being amazed that she was in a wheelchair. And the first thing I thought is, how does she get in and out? The disaster masters make their way around the packed home to assess the severity of the problem. Behind the door, up against the wall and the closet stuff stacked to the ceiling, and their little paths back into the living room, kitchen in the back, you could barely walk into the kitchen. It was a mix of construction material, like tiles, plaster to repair walls, tools, and things that she had recently purchased as gifts. Just a complete mess. Everything came home, nothing had a place. She had a sofa sleeper that she was using because she could not walk up the stairs because she had just had knee surgery. And the whole second level was uninhabitable. It turns out that all that construction material was because they had renovated a bathroom. So you, you go to the top of the stairs and on the left was this amazing bathroom. It was unfortunate that she could not even get up there to use it. You couldn't walk into the bedroom. And then the home office that was upstairs, that was over. I mean, it was full of office supplies. So it was just about safety and about her mobility issues. The job of painstakingly combing through and removing room after room of debris takes a five-person crew three days. Everything in there that was a fire, health, and a slipping hazard is gone. And according to the Alfords, not only was the cleanup successful, but the school teacher has remained committed to maintaining order. There were a few phone calls made following that, and as far as we know, even today, she's doing okay. For the disaster masters, another memorable case of severe clutter happens in April 2007. A high-level computer expert reached out for help from a very exclusive neighborhood on Manhattan's Park Avenue. This is a lady, very sharp, highly educated. We were downstairs. We were the first people to show up in about five years, and she was absolutely beyond embarrassed. She knew we had to go in. Once we got in, a few minutes after, she broke down. She was just in tears. Successful in the workplace, but behind closed doors at home, living in complete disarray. She lived in a very respectable, high rent, high rise building, and her house was a complete shambles. When you were standing where the bed was, we're standing on top about two feet above it. This was a pizza box job. It was just trash. Empty water bottles, pizza box container, food container. The homeowner, whose identity is also being kept confidential, 
is not only looking for help with removal, but also to locate a lost family treasure. We ask, was there anything you're looking for? He says, oh my God, yes, there is. I said, well, what? I've lost my mother's diamond ring, and it would really be amazing if I found it. What's the odds of finding something like that in that kind of a mess? It was so much stuff. I'm 5'3", and it, it must have come up to my shoulder. A lot of times you see these places, and there's a little path. There was no path. You know, you didn't walk in, you climbed in. It was, it was an amazing amount of trash. Because of the amount of debris, the living conditions are extremely dangerous. She was clearly in danger of having a fire in that building. Because when you live in a place like that and you have that kind of paper and you have all these extension cords underneath this stuff, uh, one spark with a lot of dryness, uh, it could very easily happen. The removal process takes a six-person team two days to complete. 100 large trash bags are filled to the brim and carted away, but not before the team makes a miraculous discovery in the bedroom. We found the ring. It was in the middle of the floor on the body and a bunch of trash. I don't know who cried more. The staff member who found it, you know, this grown man. And then she starts crying and the whole crew starts crying. It was just, it was amazing. Though not a trained mental health professional, Alfred remains confident the home will remain clutter free. What we do is we give them a new pattern of thinking. So now then that they don't buy anything unless they know where they're going to put it. They don't want to see me again. I don't want to see them again. I tell them flat out when we start, listen, I'm going to do this job once. I don't ever, ever want to have to come back and do this again. Coming up, a business executive faces eviction and the disaster masters face their worst disaster ever. What I saw would make anybody want to vomit. When caught on camera, hoarding continues. A highly successful business executive living in an apartment filled with garbage, clothes, and computers. Fearing eviction, he calls in the experts, the disaster masters. He felt that the landlord was about to create an action, an eviction. He felt the pressure. 2005, Ron and Melissa Alford head out to survey the scene. He welcomed us in and really said the magic words that fix it people love to hear, like Ron and myself, which is, will you please help me? Please help me. And what they find shocks even a team of experienced professionals. This place was, one word, abysmal. You had to push the door open with your shoulder to get it up. And then you walked around sideways like this to slip in, all right, just get in. And from there, there was just virtually everything, food, clothing, stuff everywhere. The debris in this case was a lot of trash, but also a lot of computer parts. He loved tinkering on computers and taking them apart. Just like everything, lunch containers, soda bottles, you name it. If anything you could buy at the grocery store or anywhere, you bring it home, it was all there. And a lot of paperwork. People have a huge problem with what to do with paper. The crew begins carefully sifting through the debris room by room. We don't take the snow shovels and just haul the stuff into a trash can. We actually go through everything. We're going through those papers looking for stocks and bonds and photographs and birth certificates and things like that. The removal takes a seven person crew three days to complete. We left him in really good shape. The cluttering client avoids eviction, and just months after the cleanup, the Alfreds receive an unexpected call. Out of the blue, he has a conversation with Ron and says, I just wanted to call and thank you for saving my life. Shortly after <laughs> we did that project, he ended up in the hospital. And the reason was is because he got a heart transplant. He said, if you had not taken me on as a client, if you would not have helped me, I would have died because I would have not been able to come home to recover. I would not have been able to walk into my apartment. And so you really just saved my life twice. And he was just very, very grateful. A happy ending for the business executive and another client, an ailing elderly man facing imminent eviction, cries out for help. Dead found him out and uh, they had moved to have protective services for adults evict 
Once in the apartment, the crew discovers why there has been such cause for alarm. When you walked in the door, all there was was books. I mean, tens of thousands of books. I don't know why the floor didn't collapse. From the floor up to taller than I am on both sides, it just went up six, seven feet high. Every single book in there was about philosophy, religion, and health. There was nothing else there. The removal team winds their way through the literary maze. When you walk through this tunnel, it went down to the window, and over on one side, there was what may have been a sink. To clear the apartment, the crew hauls the books out into a bin on the curb. But over the course of five days, they notice not only isn't the pile growing, it's getting smaller. People on the street would go <laughs> take the books, so every time we showed up, it was kind of a joke, you know, how the dumpster would <laughs> be less and less. A once hidden treasure of hard covers and paperbacks is donated to dumpster diving bookworms. 2006 in New Jersey, the disaster masters encountered the worst conditions they've ever seen. A stinking, rotten mess. The house had been occupied by a reclusive mother and son, both in poor health. They left their home only after it was condemned by authorities. We walked up to the steps, saw a bunch of yellow tape because the town had just condemned the house. When that happens, be quite apprehensive about what is behind that door? And you could already smell it before we even opened the door. You had to wear the respirators. You would not have been able to breathe at all. We climbed around to try to make sense of what the contents were. You couldn't even recognize the kitchen. There was so much organic material. The team finds the living room by identifying the very top of the fireplace and cannot believe what they're facing. The living room had this big uh, recliner in it and between the door and coming into where the chair was there's a pile of garbage. The whole living room was like a refrigerator from a horror flick. It was just unimaginable. The organic material came up about as high as the the arm of the recliner. It was so packed that you could actually in the in midday see the steam coming out from the methane gas from all the organic material. This stuff was rotting. Right, creating heat. What I saw would make anybody want to vomit. You didn't know if you were looking at um, a dead possum or if you were looking at just old food. I mean, it, w it was just unrecognizable. The Alfords realized that years of dropping food onto the floor had actually created a new, higher floor. They eat like this, and they watch the TV, and when they're done, they throw this one there and that that way, and it stacks up. It's so dense, so packed from having, you know, it layered, 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 then you walk on it, then you layer it, then you walk on it. It was like walking on a, a floor. You could pound your fist on it, you could break your, your wrist. And it wasn't just that area, it was throughout the entire bottom floor. In the basement, busted water pipes create a stagnant pool of sludge. They had no heat, and as a result, the pipes broke. We were wearing boots above the knees to get through that stuff because the paper and all the stuff, the clothing and things there was absolutely disgusting. For 13 days, the team digs their way through the rotting garbage, hardened candle wax, and stacks of debris. In total, the crew fills five 20-foot-long dumpsters. I didn't think it was ever, ever going to get done, I, ever. It was the longest job I've ever done. But we recovered that house. The place got cleaned up completely and straightened out. They put it on the market. We got there just in time. Hoarding is a serious disorder that can leave many feeling hopeless and overwhelmed. But as we've seen, whether the issue is garbage, books, or animals, life-saving help is available. I'm Contessa Brewer. That's all for this edition of Caught on Camera.